Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name's Elle. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with me today, exactly as you are. And thank you so much for giving me the space to be here today, exactly as I am. This is a little bit of a different video for me to film. I think that this is probably actually my first sit-down video, as you can tell by the title. Today, I'm going to be doing a fall TBR. I have a sweater on. It's been 40 degrees the past few mornings whenever I've woken up, and it just feels so fall-like. I love it so much. I love living in a state that actually actually experiences all four seasons because I know not everyone is that lucky. I love the sweet transition from summer into fall. It is so nice. Anyways, enough yapping because I have a feeling this video is going to be chatty enough in itself. I should mention as well that I'm going to be reading most of these books on my Kindle. I do have two physical books on my TBR that I actually own. There are a couple on the list that I think I want to order. For the most part, I will be reading them off of my Kindle. My favorite part of TBR videos is being able to hold up the book and talk about it, like wave it around in your face. But I'm doing the best I can with what, with what I got and I love my Kindle. Who am I kidding? I have this split up into like three different categories on my Notion. I sat down and for the past couple days I've just been kind of thinking about like what do I want to read this upcoming season? I'm also kind of hunting for a book that has similar vibes to Night Circus, but I haven't found anything yet, and I don't know if anything on my TBR holds that vibe. So the first section we're going to be starting off with in this video for my fall TBR is fantasy slash magical realism. I'm very excited to like finally be kind of dipping my toes back into the fantasy world. The first book slash first two books that I want to get to it's actually a trilogy, but as of right now, I just have interest in reading the first two books. It's The X-Hex and The Kiss Curse, both by Aaron Sterling. I remember I wanted to read The X-Hex last year. That was on my kind of like fall TBR, especially around Halloween time, and I didn't end up getting around to it. But this year, I very much want to get into it. I already have it downloaded on my Kindle, which I don't think I'm necessarily going to be getting to it soon, but it is on my Kindle whenever I decide to get into it. This one is a little bit more kind of like magical realism, romancy. From what I know, it follows a couple that had like broken up in the past and the ex-girlfriend's feeling a little vengeful. She places a curse on the ex-boyfriend. He comes back into town, things start going wrong, and it's up to them to like work together and break this curse that she ended up placing on him. And that sounds fun. It just sounds cute and lighthearted. A nice way to dip my toes into kind of spookier reads for the season. I say spooky, but a lot of them just kind of have fall undertones, fantasy undertones. That being said, if I don't like the X-Hex, I may not read the kiss curse, but who knows. I may end up giving them both a chance. I won't judge them too harshly against each other. The next book that I do want to get to that I actually have a physical copy of is Masters of Death by Olivier. This is going to be my first book by this author, and I know they wrote The Atlas Six, which I've heard a lot of good things about. It's not on my TBR for the foreseeable future, maybe at some point. So we're starting off with Masters of Death. Every time I open it, it has the fan art as like the first, like the inside. And oh, I just love the way this looks. It looks so freaking nice. From what I can understand, it's about Viola and Fox. Viola is a struggling real estate agent and a vampire. Fox is a medium, although he's a little bit of like a uh, morally ambiguous guy, which I love morally ambiguous characters, one of my favorites. She's trying to sell a house that is haunted by ghosts, so Viola and Fox like pair up to try and like to help get rid of the ghost in the mansion. I guess they get involved in like another quest. V and Fox soon discover that the difference between a mysterious lost love and an annoying dead body isn't nearly as distinct as they thought. On the back it says there's a game that the mortals play, there's only one rule, don't lose. That just sounds 
so fun and so intriguing i'm very excited to read this and overall the cover is absolutely stunning i think it is so beautiful the next book on this list is going to be sorcery of thorns by margaret rogerson and i specifically put this on my list because it is a standalone fantasy book i have heard that it is a very good book to get into if you want to read fantasy i'm excited to read it because i think the main thing holding me back from reading fantasy is the fact that it's not just one book like most of the time it is multiple books and it's not ones you can jump around with either like you very much have to read them in order for the most part and i find that i can struggle with that at times but fantasy is definitely something i want to get into so i think starting with a standalone is going to be a good option the next book slash book series that i want to read is the entangled with Fae series by tasanja odette i have no idea if i'm pronouncing her name right this is a series of five books it is curse of the wolf king heart of the raven prince kiss of the selkie a taste of poison and a dream so wicked i mentioned how much i love the lunar chronicles which if you've never read the lunar chronicles it is a series of fairy tale retellings i'm very excited to read these i'm very much looking forward to kind of like a new adult take on fairy tales. I've actually already read Curse of the Wolf King which is a take on Beauty and the Beast and I liked it. I didn't love it. I liked it. I thought the main character fell a little bit flat but I very much liked Elliot the King, the main male character in the story. I thought he was just like quiet and cute and very sweet just loving energy i'm excited to continue on with this series the next book like i mentioned is heart of the raven prince that is on my tbr i think i'm actually going to get to that later on in the week so the next book on this list is the modern girl's guide to magic by lindsay hall and honestly the first thing that caught my attention was the cover of this book it is beautiful genuinely stunning i love the way it looks it honestly it makes me want the physical edition so who knows i've been trying not to buy books but i very well may end up buying this one because i think i don't know it is just such a pretty cover in a way this kind of gives me night circus vibes mainly just because of the magic competition element which i love the thought of kind of like forbidden love and that aspect of like this is your, you know, this is your competitor, so you can't get involved with them. And I love that idea so much. Just talking about it makes me excited. I guess like kind of like the whole thing in this story is like, she's not necessarily the best at magic, the main character in this story. So it's the fact of like, she gets into a competition with this other mage, gets involved with them and the last book in the fantasy slash magical realism section is assistant to the villain i've heard a lot of things about this book i've seen a lot of different people reading it i don't want to really look up too much information about it because i will most likely accidentally get spoiled i think this is the one book in this section that is hyped we'll see how i feel about it it sounds like the lines of it you know there's someone who gets hired to be an assistant to the villain and who knows maybe there's some forbidden romance involved everyone loves a little forbidden romance i am excited for that i keep saying that every book that i'm mentioning on this list i'm excited to read and also i didn't say this in the beginning but i feel like i do need to add a bit of a disclaimer my list isn't super hefty but by no means do i feel like i'm going to read every single book on this list who knows i may that'll be amazing but I also don't expect myself to stick to this list. I'm very much a mood reader. I read what I feel and especially if I find a new book that catches my interest, obviously I'm not gonna hold myself to this list. Like if I find something else I wanna read, I'll go ahead and read it. This isn't a strict list. Take it as like a wish list of books that I would hope to get to this season. Anyways, moving on to the next section of books, which is fluffy romances. This isn't like atmospheric cozy romances or anything, like this is just simply fluffy romances that I want to read 
especially to break up everything like I don't want to be just jumping from fantasy 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 I want to break up the fantasy books I'm reading with some cuter lighter stories the first book in this section is part of your world by abby jimenez over the past couple weeks i've read her other books that she's put out such as the friend zone yours truly the happy ever after playlist and i've really loved all of them i've truly genuinely enjoyed every single one that i've read i very much like the way that abby writes i like the way that she portrays characters i like the way that she portrays love part of your world is one of two books of hers that i haven't read yet that is definitely one that i want to get to i love the way abby jimenez writes romances i can definitely see her being one of my favorite romance authors and then i do want to continue the maple hill series or the icebreaker series wildfire is book two and then daydream just recently came out wildfire follows russ and if you've read the first book he's the one that like causes all the dominoes to fall i would say this book follows russ and it takes place at a summer camp so it's very much not during fall by any means but I very much liked the Icebreaker series. I'm very excited to continue it. And then Daydream just came out a few weeks ago, or honestly, yeah, I wanna say it came out the end of August. I'm not entirely sure, but I do wanna read Daydream. That one follows Henry. I loved Henry in the first book. I love just like the connection we got to build with him. And I feel like his romance story will be so freaking cute. I don't wanna put too much hype on it, but I feel like that one could have the potential to be my favorite, so we shall see. Next, I want to read the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver. Recently, I just read the Gold Rush Ranch series by her, which was my first ever time... How do I word that? My first Elsie Silver series. The Gold Rush Ranch series was my first Elsie Silver series. She knows how to write a man. That is all I will say, especially, I have a soft spot for cowboys, like, oh my goodness, and she knows how to write a cute cowboy. I love it so much. 10 out of 10. Once again, this isn't one book, but it's a series of five books. Flawless, Heartless, Powerless, Reckless, and Hopeless. I have heard a lot of people talk about the Chestnut Spring series. Honestly, I've heard more people talk about that than the Gold Rush Ranch series. I know that this series is incredibly hyped up, but I'm not taking any of that into consideration because I know I very much enjoyed the Gold Rush Ranch series. I'm very much anticipating to enjoy the Chestnut Springs series, at least with the Gold Rush Ranch series, which is a tongue twister. You try saying that as many times as I have been. I read all of them like one after the other, so I think I'm gonna try and break this one up a little bit more. Like I don't think I'm gonna jump, you know, to one right after the other. I definitely want to give myself a little bit of a break in between them. And the last book in this section, Only When It's Us by Chloe Liese. Liese? I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I've been seeing her name pop up a lot on Reddit for like recommended fluffy romances. That is the book that I've seen come up the most. Yeah, we'll see how I feel about it. I'm always up for a good standalone series. It's the first book in the Bergman Brothers series. I'm not entirely sure how popular this book series is. It's an enemies to lovers situation. And then finally, the last section on my fall TBR is spooky reads. So these are gonna be a little bit more kind of like psychological thrillers, more so like mystery, like more so maybe I shouldn't read at night vibes because I am a very paranoid person. So there aren't a whole lot of books on this list, but I love like a morally ambiguous character. I love an unreliable narrator. You know, I very much like, you don't really know what's happening. You don't know if the narrator's telling the truth. I love that. I love an unreliable narrator specifically. The first book on this list is The Guest List by Lucy Foley. And during my stint working at the library, this book was so popular. It was so so popular checked out by like all the middle-aged ladies and i never got around to reading it but every time i saw it i was like i want to read this 
I think it's like a group of people get invited onto an island and basically like shit starts going wrong like shit hits the fucking fan and it's just like a very much almost like maybe like a whodunit situation I feel like is what I'm gathering it's going to be the first Lucy Foley book I've read I know she has a couple other books out I know the Paris apartment is one of them the next book on my list is all's well by Mona Wad and honestly like with her as an author i will buy any book that she puts out without even reading the synopsis whenever i bought this book i didn't know like i hadn't even read the back of it i didn't know what it was about at all all i knew was i love her as an author and i will pretty well read anything she puts out and that's going off of simply just having read bunny bunny is so unlike any other book that i've read i want to get more into her mind as an author all's well this one is a little bit kind of like shakespearean i think she's a teacher and once again shit hits the fan shit ends up going wrong and i love it when shit goes wrong in a story especially whenever i'm looking for it following in the same footsteps by mono wad i want to read rouge i thought it was rogue but it's actually rouge i have no idea what this book is about and i have that coming in the mail but I will read anything that Mona Wad puts out. Like I would probably read her grocery lists if she let me. The second to last book in this section is The Silent Patient. The amount of times that I've almost bought this book walking into Walmart is insane. Like I think I've picked it up and put it down probably four or five times. Every time I read the back I am so enraptured by it and I think the last time I picked it up I ended up reading the first two pages or something and it automatically caught my attention it is from like I said from what I gather in the back it's basically about a woman who killed her husband and the day she killed her husband is the last day she spoke like she hasn't spoke a word since then events transpire where I guess she gets put in like a mental institution so she ends up having a therapist who I guess this therapist is the only person she talks to or something along those lines I'm not sure giving unreliable narrator, giving morally ambiguous, like I am very much here for it. It just seems very much up my alley. And then finally, the last book to wrap up this fall TBR video is First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston. And this one, it just screams unreliable narrator. It's like about a girl who assumes an identity and basically like convinces everyone that she's someone she's not or something like that. And that just sounds so fun. I'm gonna read up the synopsis on this one. Evie Porter has everything a nice Southern girl could want. A doting boyfriend, a house with a white picket fence, a tight group of friends. The only catch, Evie Porter doesn't exist. And at first I was like, is she a ghost? But no, she assumes like the idea, like she makes up fake identities, I guess. And something like that just sounds so intriguing because it's not in just like a funny, funny, ha ha stealing identities way. Not that that is ever funny, funny, ha ha. Yeah, she like assumes a fake identity, but I guess in like the thing with this most recent kind of like identity that she's assuming, she starts falling for the guy. Another book along the lines of like shit starts to go wrong, morally ambiguous, unreliable narrator. As you can tell, I have a thing. Like if I'm reading a psychological thriller, I very much have a layout of books I like to read. All of these books in this section encapsulate that, at least from my findings. Going off of what I've read, all these books just sound very much up my alley of morally ambiguous, unreliable narrator, shit hitting the fan. Mm. Anyways, that is all the books on my fall TBR. Like I said, I definitely don't think I'm going to be able to read all of these. It's a nice idea to think about it. <laughs> I'm so excited for cozy season. I'm excited for pumpkins. I'm excited for the leaves changing. I am excited to be able to drink hot coffee without sweating. Like... And of course, I want to make a whole bunch of fall vlogs, fall reading vlogs. I want to get back into the routine of sharing my life with you all. And who knows, depending on how I feel about this video, I may make more sit-down videos. I definitely feel like 
towards the end of this my speaking pace quickened up a little bit i think that is something i probably need to work on that is all the books that i hopefully potentially maybe want to read this fall season until next time stay safe stay hydrated and i will see you all soon